Hey guys, Attorney Brooke Goff, live from our in-office studio. Uh, so pumped for this, right? Because it's been a while. Uh, the videos have been shot from my living room, my pool, uh, my, uh, I don't know, my dining room, I think I shot one. <laughs> so I'm super pumped to be back in the office so I can shoot these. Um, we are, as most of you probably know, if you follow our Facebook, moving our location from Hartford to West Hartford. We listen to our clients. I listen to all of you guys. And we send surveys out to many clients. And the clients say, hey, amazing attorneys, crappy parking. So we listen to that. And when you see four, five, six, seven, I mean, the downtown Hartford thing is great for us. It's great for some of the clients, but for most of the clients, it's been a pain. So we listen and we want to accommodate per our usual selves, right? So um, we are now downtown West Hartford Center, tons of parking on our actual location. Uh, the new office is opening on uh, technically July 1st, but um, lots of, it's an amazing office. You think this office is nice, you gotta go there. And uh, super pumped about that. Um, so if some of you guys don't know who I am, my name is Attorney Brooke Goff. Yes, I'm the woman in the billboard with the hair that comes off the top. Yes, I'm the, the I almost just said the chick, the woman uh, on um, uh, WTNH Channel 8 uh, that does educational segments. Yes, I'm the woman on 104.1. Yes, I'm the woman on social media. So, so we've made a huge splash in the personal injury realm, right? So uh, it's great, it's fun. Uh, we're so swiftly growing, you have no idea. Uh, luckily, I can report that COVID did not really affect us, so that's a great thing. And now we're phasing back into the office. So I wanna take this time to do, because everybody else is returning to work as well, um, I wanna take this time to do um, a video on workers' compensation, right? Workers' Comp 101, we'll call it. Uh, most of you guys that, that have been following me or see my videos know that I'm a comp guru. This is what I do. I know it like the back of my hand. Um, I'm kind of in a comp encyclopedia. The attorneys in my office are also encyclopedias. We round table just about every issue. Um, but I think that people going back to work, you may forget some things or, you know, um, sometimes when people see my segments come up, they probably pass through them. Oh, it doesn't apply to me, pass through it. Uh, but guys, guess what? Just like when it first snows outside um, and things get crazy, well, guess what? That's kind of the same thing we're expecting with workers comp. Safety regulations are relaxed. People are paying more attention to the mask situation as they should, then they're really paying to attention to, hey, we need to make sure this, piece of equipment safe, or we can't have guys doing this or women doing this. So um, we're expecting a huge uptick in comp cases, unfortunately. Uh, 2019, the um, the highest occurrence of a, of a certain type of case in workers' comp, can you believe was motor vehicle accidents? So as an attorney, that surprises me because I would have guessed it would be a premises case, whether it be a burn, a fall, something along these lines. It's not, it's, it's, it's motor vehicle accidents. So I'm gonna do another video, not now, but maybe next week about the interplay between if you're, at, if you're working and you get in a car accident and how they interplay together and why you need the same attorney for both. But for today, we're gonna focus on workers' comp. So if you get hurt at work, what do you need to know to do? First, I tell everybody this, whether you're serious about signing an attorney or you're not, you're, there's no such thing as wasting a lawyer's time. We go to school, not just to make money, guys. We go to school to educate you, the public, to help the public. This is a public service position. Um, and you gotta understand, a lot of attorneys have lost sight of that. We haven't. My staff is trained. We are aggressive in just providing you guys the education you need to know so that you know what to do if you're hurt at work, all right? So, um, just to start here quick, so you're hurt at work, what do you need to do? First, you should talk to a lawyer. You should talk to a lawyer so you can educate yourself about the process. It's a free consultation. If a lawyer tries to charge you, then you can go to another lawyer that won't. We don't charge for our consultations. And just tell the lawyer what happened, okay? It's a confidential conversation. You get what we call attorney-client privilege, so the lawyer can't go call your employer or call your friends or anything like that. Tell the lawyer in all honesty what happened, how it happened, and the lawyer will be able to look at the file and choose a lawyer that does comp, by the way. Don't choose a lawyer that, do, that does real estate that you just know. Choose a lawyer that focuses on comp as a major, port, at least 50% of their practice, and personal injury. You want somebody that does both, all right? So whether it be my office or somebody else, but most people that see my videos end up calling us, but it is what it is, all right? Do what you're gonna do. So call a lawyer. If you come in, you say, hi, I'm John Smith. Um, this is what happened to me. As an attorney, I'll sp I've spent hour, two hours with clients that end up trying to handle on their own. 
But guess what, guys? The, the kicker is they end up hiring me six months down the road after they did all the work and I still get the same fee, okay? Attorneys, just so you guys know, get paid contingency. It's 20% on workers' comp cases. It's only if you get a rating, which usually comes a year after surgery or a year after the injury if, if, uh, you, know, if you didn't have surgery. Or, and or I should say, because sometimes it's part of the same, 20% of the settlement. But again, guys, remember, in workers' comp, they don't have to settle your case. So it's either 20% of the PPD and or 20% of the settlement. It, it's the same number. I'll give you an example. If your case is worth 100,000, right? 20,000 is the PPD, permanent partial disability, you get paid for your rating, and $80,000 is the settlement. So my office, if you get PPD first, the rating, we would get 20% of $20,000, right? What is that, guys? What's 20% of, of $20,000? It's $4,000, right? So, because four times five is 20, right? So 4,000 bucks of the 20. Now you get another 80, okay? So we would get 20% of the 80. 20% of the 80 plus 20% of the 20 still gives you the same 20% of the 100, which is 20. Understand? So it doesn't make a difference. It's not like the attorneys are double dipping or, or getting fees. We only get that settlement part of it if there's a settlement. If there's not, we get 20% of your permanency. If you get no permanency, which is rare, but it does happen. If you get no permanency and or you get no settlement, the attorney work for free. We go to 100 hearings, we work for free. Fine. Doesn't happen often. All right. So at least in that meeting, you're going to know what you're facing, how you're going to face it, what the likelihood of your, of your, well, really what the prognosis of your case is down the road. And then you can make a decision of whether or not to get a lawyer involved. After that conversation, about 90% of people hire me. The other 10% of about that 10%, about 5% hire me six months later after they've done all the work and they're like, I just should have hired you in the first place. Yes. Let me work for my money. Okay, good. So how do we start? You, you, you slip and fall at work, let's just say, okay? We're gonna keep the car accident out of it because it's more complicated. We slip and fall at work, what do you do? Firstly, if you need medical attention, you need to get it. Don't be a tough guy, stand up, brush it off, say, I'm good, I'm good, look around, see if anybody saw you. You need medical attention, guys. Get looked at, you're not a doctor, all right? Uh, you're not a doctor, you don't treat yourself as one. If you're not a doctor, do not just think you know what's best for you. Get medical attention. Um, you can, you should go to a hospital. However, if your jaw, if it's not a very serious injury, like a back or neck sprain, and your job wants you to go see Concentra or Oc Health, I don't mind it. I never have my clients stay there for more than one or two visits, but at least you're getting the medical attention and you're documenting it. Um, if it's not a serious injury, back or neck type thing, then you can, uh, you got to tell your employer. Guys, this isn't a secret. Your employer's not going to fire you for it, all right? And if they do, they're going to have a whole nother slew of problems. And your case is worth that much more. But it's it's rare, guys, all right? I, don't, I rarely see it. So do not worry that your employer's going to fire you. Don't, don't lie. I've had people do this, that, oh, I fell down the stairs at home. And then you call me later and you go, hey... Brooke, sorry, but um, I actually told the doctors I fell at home because I didn't want to lose my job. Please, guys, don't be that person because then I can't. It's I had one case. I ended up settling. I ended up fixing it. it. Took me a year and a half. What I could have done in six months. You're only hurting yourself. Tell your employer what happened. If you have an out of work note, give it to your employer. Okay, this is if you decide to handle it on your own. You don't listen to me and call a lawyer. Um, when you're you're and so you get to pick your own doctor. Okay, so let's say you saw a consent or whatever. You need and you don't want to stay, which I recommend you always go to a specialist, not consent or our health. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but they're, you're definitely going to want to get seen by a specialist that knows workers' comp and that knows the process that that doesn't have a relationship with your employer, right? So let's say you choose Dr. Smith. If there's a Dr. Smith, sorry, but you choose Dr. Smith and he works at an orthopedic group in your area. You need to make that move from Concentra to Dr. Smith or Oc Health to Dr. Smith almost immediately because the longer you stay at Concentra or Oc Health, three, four, five visits, the more the insurance company is going to push back and say, yeah, we sent you there, but you stayed. So therefore you chose your own doctor. You may have a problem choosing your doctor later on. All right. You don't want to run into that. Right. So you're going to go to the first appointment, get it documented. Then you're going to want to start looking around for doctors. If you have a lawyer, your lawyer is going to know also who is in the comp realm, who's good in the comp realm, who knows comp. It's important you choose a doctor that knows comp. It's going to come into play later on. So choose your doctor. In that first 30 days, there's a 30 C that has to be filed. Three zero C, right? You can get this form wcc.ct.gov, I think, something, or uh, um, you could just type in Workers' Comp Connecticut and you'll find it. But there's a form called the Form 30C. This is how you start your case. Some people get confused, and I'm going to kill that confusion right now. Some people are like, oh, well, um, 
I'm gonna make up an insurance company. ABC Insurance Company called, said they were with my employer. I actually already have a claim number, Brooke. I don't need one. No, that claim number is your insurance claim number. That doesn't mean you have an open comp case, guys, right? Comp does their own numbers. It's called a WCC number. That's what you need to fix issues and get a hearing. Okay, WCC number, not a claim number. The claim number comes from the insurance company on your side. Who cares about that number? That has nothing to do with you. Who cares? Okay, don't fall fool to that because the, if the insurance company knows that you haven't opened a claim yet, they if they mess around with your money or they do whatever, they know it's going to take you forever to get a hearing because not only do you need to open your claim now, but now you need to request a hearing and they know you don't know what you're doing. All right, so it's a 30C form. That's how you actually open a case. You have to send that form certified and again, have this conversation with the attorney first, guys, because if you decide, if you talk to an attorney, you decide you want to bring on the attorney, that attorney is going to do those forms for you. You're not going to do them. They're part of your legal file. You need to make sure they're done right. So that attorney is going to do it for you. Okay. So WCC file, right? So what are we going to do? You're going to, um, you're going to send that certified, that 30C to workers comp in your area. I'm going to talk about that in a second and your employer certified. Don't hand deliver it. People have amnesia a year later when you claim, Hey, look, I hand delivered it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Well, show me your proof. I don't have proof, Bob, I already gave it to you. No, you're in trouble, okay? You will be in trouble under certain circumstances. Certified takes you out of the equation, prevents you from having to go up to Bob, the boss, and say, here, Bob, here's my 30C. Don't do it. Send a certified, be done with it, all right? And your attorney will send a certified as well. I always tell people also having an attorney, um, having an attorney keeps you out of it, right? It, it makes the attorney the bad guy, which trust me is worth 20% in and of itself most of the time. So that 30C, which comp commission do you send it to, right? So let's say you work in, you live in Harvard and you work in Norwich. Well, you have your option. Most people don't know that. You don't have to file it where the injury happened. You can file it where you live or where the injury happened. If it's far away, like Harvard, Norwich, which many people do, by the way, live in Harvard and go up to Norwich, file it in Harvard. Okay, file it, not because it's a better jurisdiction. There's no better jurisdiction in Connecticut for the most part. It's because it's more convenient for you. If there's a hearing, you're, even if your attorney has a hearing um, and uh, you know they wanna be, they wanna be, obviously you wanna make sure if you have to be there, it's most convenient for you. Understand something, guys. Um, the attorneys, you don't have to choose, if, you, if you're opening your case in Harvard, you don't have to choose a Harvard attorney necessarily, right? We serve the whole state of Connecticut. I have people in my office when comp is open in Norwich one day, Stanford one day, Milford, uh, which is the Danbury area, um, you know, uh, you name it, we're, we're Hartford, Middletown, New Britain, Waterbury, you name it. So we're everywhere all the time. So you don't, don't restrict yourself to attorneys in those areas because some of these smaller areas, you're going to get decreased quality. So you want to choose a lawyer that's big enough that they can support you in your case and they can pay to support you in your case, right? And we obviously represent ourselves to be that person, but that's up to you how you decide. So that's your 30 C. Okay. Next form, 1A. This is how we calculate your comp rate, right? So form 1A, again, can be downloaded. You have to fill this out. How do you file? Married filing jointly, single, uh, head of household. And plug that in. Who are your, um, how many people do you claim on your tax return for the year prior, okay? So if you get hurt March of 2000, March of 2020, uh, how many people did you claim in 2019? That's what we care about, all right? So let's say your kids were all home and you claimed four kids, right? Um, I don't care where they are now. The, the 2019, you claim four kids. You're gonna claim yourself, your wife or husband, and four children. That's six deductions, okay? Um, concurrent employment. Do you have a second job? Do you deliver mail? Do you, um, I don't know, do you um, work at night at a restaurant? Are you a wait staff? Do you, whatever you may do as a second job, paralegal, whatever, that's concurrent employment. You get credit for those wages, guys. Super important. Most people have no idea what that means. And they, I had a client come in without his concurrent employment. He made like uh, $280 a week. With his concurrent employment, it jacked his comp rate to 965. Do you know what the differential is that they owe my client? Because he hired me late, $24,000. He had no idea he was owed that we found. And we're like, we gotta fix it now. It took me months to fix it because he should have hired me initially, but we fixed it. He's about to get a check for 24 grand. He had no idea. Because he said, well, it's not my second employer's fault. Your second employer is not the one paying it, guys. It's called it's what we call the second injury fund. It's the state of Connecticut. We don't need to get into that. But just so you know, if you have concurrent employment, that goes on here too. So now you fill this form out. You send a copy of this. I always tell people, send a, and you sign it, send a copy of it. This is if you don't have a lawyer, your lawyer will do this with you. If you don't have a lawyer, send a copy of it to the comp commission you filed the 30C with. I would put it with the 30C, to be honest. And send a copy of it to um, your employer, or by then your employer's insurance company might have contacted you, your employer's insurance company. That does not need to go certified. 
within, let's say the COVID's not in effect because the, all the timelines are all weird and crazy, but um, in, uh, then you need to file, what, that you're gonna get something in the mail. So when you have a comp case, guys, right? Anything certified means emergency. You mind, you know that siren? You guys, might, I did it this morning. Ever mistakenly push the 911 button on your phone and it goes Think of the certified mail as literally, here. you should hear that in your head every time. Don't throw it on the side. Don't throw it in the mail pile. You should cut your finger on the crease of the envelope trying to rip the thing open, okay? Because that means they're either contesting your case or trying to cut you off, or you have an IME. All very important things. Do not ignore these things, okay? So open it up, read it. You'll likely receive a Form 43 within 20 days of your 30C being filed. It's gonna say, most of the time, even if you fell right in front of your employer, John Smith did not, um, we are contesting that this occurred at work, that um, that this his injury was not, or we reserve the right to say whatever it wants to say, this happened at work, this injury did not happen at work, we reserve the right to contest, da, 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 da. You're gonna freak out. You're gonna be like, how can they deny this? I fell right in front of Bob, right? So what does that mean? Well, it just, it's a form that they file. It's, it's pretty generic, but most people freak out and hire me at that point, okay? You have to object to it. I always say, some commissioners say you don't have to. I always, I always like to use that as my soapbox to make sure they know that we're objecting to it and it's being paid. So that's called a form uh, 43. That's gonna arrive, like I said, within 28 days of the 30C being filed, received, I should say. If that's not filed in that time, they, they, uh, lose the right to be able to contest your injuries later on. That's why that 30C is so important to be accurate. Then you file what's called, a, if they file it late, you file what's called a motion to preclude, which has to be written. It's like a motion in court. And then you get a hearing on it and they may lose the right to ever contest your claim. I have a few of those now. Doesn't happen often, but it happens. Um, you're also gonna request what's called, so uh, you have to calculate your comp rate using that 1A form, guys, all right? You're gonna sit down and you're gonna take a notepad and you're gonna take about four pages and you're gonna calculate it, trying to follow the guidelines and you're not gonna get the right answer because even most attorneys don't get the right answer. We invest in a, comp, a, a system called what we call comp tools, C-O-M-P tools. Um, only law firms can get it. Most plaintiff's firms don't have it. Claimant's firms don't have it. I don't know why. I'm of the opinion if a defense firm has it, I want what they have on steroids, right? So that's why we invest in it. I can plug in from your 1A, what your, de what your deductions are, which don't count up to 2017 anyways, they're called exemptions. Um, your uh, average weekly wage, so we take your 52 week pay history, which we request from the, uh, which we request from your adjuster. You plug that in there, you plug in how you file, and then you put in your password and it pops out magically the comp rate. Jim, John Smith should be making $723 a week, great. After we have that calculation, you t I always take that page from Contools, I send it to the adjuster with the 1A, and I said, give me a jurisdictional voluntary agreement. See guys, most of you probably have your head spinning. This all is occurring in the first 60 days, and if it doesn't, you're gonna pay for it later. The, by getting a jurisdictional VA, it automatically makes your case accepted. You need to get it signed correctly, right? You gotta push the insurance company sometimes to give you one. You have to ask for hearings to get one and you have to participate in those hearings. You can't just go into a hearing. Commissioner's not gonna do it for you guys, all right? Again, why you need a lawyer for comp. Okay, so now your jurisdictional VA's been done. What do we do? You are 9,000 steps ahead of most people, okay? So now you have your jurisdictional VA done, your 1A's been filed, your 30C's been filed, the 43 was filed, let's say timely. Now you're treating. Right? Now you get mileage to and from your doctor's appointments, guys, right? You can get that mileage form online too. We give them to our clients as well. I'm actually getting binders made for my clients as we speak uh, as a little, you know, little something to make it their lives a little easier. But you get right now 58 and a half cents a mile. I do predict that that will drop significantly because the COVID gas prices have dropped significantly for next year. They take the average gas price, blah, blah, blah. So but for right now it's 58 and a half cents a mile round trip. You go from your home, 10 miles to John Smith's doctor's office, 10 miles back home, that's 20 miles, 58 and a half cents a mile. Uh, that's like 11 bucks, guys, right? So it's a lot. So that adds up. You do that three days a week, now you're at $33 a month, or $33 a week, right? You do that three times a week, that's $130 a month. You do that for 12 months, you're over you're 1300 bucks. It's easier to process these every 60 days. Do not wait until the end. You'll never, ever, ever get your full payment for miles. It just won't happen because the adjuster's gonna mess with you. Now, let's say you're out of work. You're out of work for five weeks, excuse me, five months, let's say, right? And now the doctor releases you back to light duty work. That's called, T, you move from TT, temporary total status, to TP, temporary partial meaning light duty. 
you're gonna get another form in the mail. Well, you should if they're doing their job, call the form 36, certified. Remember we talked about this, this, this the siren. You're gonna open that thing. You're gonna rip it open, cut your finger again. Probably the same spot you cut it on the form 43 or the RME notice that you got it, right? So you're gonna open that up, you're gonna see it, and you're gonna be like, Okay, they're trying to they're trying to change me from TT to TP, and it says I have to do work searches. What is a work search? So right now, guys, work searches are waived for COVID, but I don't know how much longer that's going to be because nobody can get jobs now, right? Employment's like over fifteen percent or something crazy. So what do you got to do? What you got to do is you got to download the work search form, which again, when people have us, we do all this for the client. But download the work search form, and then you need to do five work searches a week. Now, it can depend if you have certain restrictions or it's not probable for you to do five, then we argue for less. But five work searches a week, you have to call, go to employers, whatever the case might be. And again, I don't know how long until they restore these back on because right now you're not, their work searches are waived. And if you, and you have to turn those in every week. Now, if you have us, you give them to us, we take care of it, we guide you through it. If you're on your own, you gotta send them to the adjuster. You don't send those to the adjuster, your check stops coming, guys. Now, that's disastrous for people, right? Well, they're serious about it. You go off auto pay, your check stops coming. Um, and sometimes people, you gotta also know what your TP rate is, right? When you're light duty, it might be less than your TT rate. So you might, actually checks might go a little less as well. So these are all things, guys, that are happening and your heads are probably all spinning right now. And I told you I'm an encyclopedia and I can keep going. Um, so what's next? Okay, so now your TP, um, and then let's just say it's a year down the road and the doctor says, John Smith, you've reached what we call maximum medical improvement. Um, you have a permanent restriction of the use of your, I don't remember what I said he hurt, his back. Um, and, um, you, and I give you a 10% impairment rating. But your, his employer says, I can't accommodate you, John. So that means John can't return to work, right? So this is a great time to settle the case. If you can get the other side to settle, which is about 75% chance, it's a great time to settle it. But how do you know what to ask for, right? You're, well, you might be entitled to back TT if they didn't pay you everything, differential, future TT, uh, with something called 308A, 308AB, an increasing rating over time, uh, future medical costs. Um, if, you, if, you, if it's not probable that you can get another job under certain circumstances, this might be an Osterling claim, which would turn into what we call something similar to a perm total. Basically, guys, your heads are spinning, I know, and I'm not gonna get too far into it, but they could also say, John, I can't take you back. Here's your 37.4 weeks. A back is worth 374 weeks. You got a 10%, so you get 37.4 weeks of pay. After that 37.4 weeks, your checks are gonna run out and you're done. And your case is still open, so you get medical care, but you're done. Um, the doctor's gonna fill out a Form 42 at that point. Uh, that Form 42 is gonna have your rating on there. Again, we deal with the doctor to get this filled out and get taken care of. We send it in, we do all this stuff. But just if you're doing it yourself, this is what you're doing. Um, that comes just a year after surgery, year after the injury. And then that's it. Let's say the job can take him back. Fantastic, you can't settle if you continue to work there. If you do settle and they're interested in settlement, you, the uh, workers' comp will pay for two years of qualified education for you. So if you can't return back to the job, but you have other skills, comp will pay for two years of education. You wanna be an electrician, phlebotomist, HVAC, barber, massage therapist, you name it, two years of education paid for you, right? So there are a lot of benefits to settling your case. Um, I can't think of, if, but if you wanna to return to work, this doesn't apply to you, but if you if you don't, but it's keeping your case open, there's no good reasons unless you're a perm total, guys. It's a myth, and I can explain this to you in more detail, but most people are so protected. What about my future? Well, guys, guess what? If you get another injury, car accident, slip and fall, hurt at work again to the same body part, that comp case just became pretty much worthless. So get your payment on it now, and when, when, when you have the most leverage, the time you're rated, get your lump sum, Get your two years of education if you choose, of course, to leave the job, and then start something new. That's the key. If you can't return to the job, of course, or if your job can't accommodate, all right? So, and now we do a settlement, we do a stip, it's called, you close out your case, and then you're good to go. Guys, I haven't even scratched the surface, right? So uh, this is just a brief overview of a typical comp case. The attorney handles all of these things. So next time, if you're hurt, your friend's hurt, your parents are hurt, your kid's hurt at work, you should need to sit down and be like, the headache, the, the leave that you're about to take after watching this video, um, I can't live that. Let attorney Goff and her people live that. And that's what we do, we live it, and we love it, and that's how we come really good at it. Um, you know, there's no case that I won't look at. Um, there's no angle we won't take. We're one of the only firms, not the only one of the only firms taking COVID-19 cases right now as well. Um, why? 
somebody's got to pave the way, right? Somebody's got to do it and we're doing it. We have quite a few of them. We have some of the unfortunate COVID-19 death cases as well. So guys, if somebody dies of a comp injury, um, there may be something called survivor spouse benefits entitled to the spouse for the life expectancy. These are all things that you probably don't know. So don't assume. Assumption is a toxin. You need to talk to a lawyer that knows what they're doing, not just a lawyer. Don't call your family attorney, your real estate attorney. Talk to a lawyer that's doing what I am right now. It takes a lot of confidence in what you're saying to get on live Facebook feed and say, hey, fact check me, right? It, it takes a lot. That's why you see, don't see a lot of attorneys doing it. You see their heads on billboards, but you don't see them doing this. Why? Because they don't know what the hell they're doing. They just know how to market themselves. They let the people in their office do the rest of it, and their people get sick of it, and they work for me. So, guys, here's the deal. You ready? Free consultation, 203-399-0000, one. Two, you can text us, 203-399-0000. Free consultation, it's totally privileged, meaning it doesn't leave the room, and uh, we walk you through the entire process, all right? So enjoy the weekend, enjoy the week, beautiful weather here in Connecticut, thank God. Now, if you're returning to work, be careful, you can never be too careful, and you know what, guys, if you get hurt at work, we should be your first call. If you know somebody that's hurt at work, uh, you, they should know where they're first called to. So how do you do that? You share this to your Facebook feed, right? You share it. Share it because I guarantee everybody either knows somebody that's been hurt at work, knows a friend that's been hurt at work or has been hurt at work themselves. So help them. Let us help you. Let us help them. Okay, guys, take it easy. Bye. See you later.